So a relation on a non-empty set S is a subset of the Cartesian product of S with itself. Now I want to define something called an equivalence relation. So an equivalence relation, and I'm going to use a little tilde to represent an equivalence relation, on a non-empty set S is a relation on a set S that satisfies the following three properties. And it's very nice, they're in alphabetical order. R, S, T makes them easy to remember. First, we have a reflexive property, and that just says that for any elements in the set S, A is equivalent to A. Okay, so that one makes sense. How about the symmetric property? For any elements A and B in the set S, if A is equivalent to B, then B is equivalent to A. All right, nothing too profound here. The transitive property. For all elements A, B, and C in the set S, if A is equivalent to B and B is equivalent to C, then A is equivalent to C. All right, so to really see how this works, it's probably best to look at some examples. So here are the three properties again, just for reference, and we'll look at the example that's here. On the set of real numbers, so that's going to be my set, let x be equivalent to y if and only if x equals y for any two real numbers x and y. Okay, so an equivalence relation kind of sounds like an equal sign should work as an equivalence relation. Let's check the three properties. So first we have reflexive. For any real number x, can you say that x equals x? Um, I would say so. I mean, think about any real number. How about the number 2? Does 2 equal 2? Yeah, sure, that works. And if you think about it, yeah, for any real number, it's going to equal itself. How about the symmetric property? For any real numbers x and y, if x equals y, then y equals x. Um, well, think about it. If 2 equals 2, then 2 equals 2. That works. And if 2 equals 3, well, 2 doesn't equal 3, so that would never happen where they're different anyways. So. Yeah, this works. Um, this is not a proof, of course, these are just examples, but if you just think about it, it makes sense. We know how the equal sign works, and you know that if x equals y, then y equals x. Sure. How about the transitive property? For any real numbers x, y, and z, if x equals y and y equals z, then x equals z. Well, we have the same situation that we had above here. These two things, x and y, are only going to be equal to each other if they're the same, so saying that x equals y and y equals z and x equals z, well, they're all going to be the same in this particular case. So sure, that would work for us. And so we can say that this is an equivalence relation. Let's look at another example. Okay, how about on the set of real numbers, let x be equivalent to y if and only if x is less than y for any numbers x and y uh, that are real numbers. Okay, let's check the three properties. First, we have reflexive. For any real number x, x is less than x. Hmm, well, I think we already see a problem here. Is 2 less than 2? No. So this property, no good. How about the symmetric property? For any real numbers x and y, if x is less than y, then y is less than x. Okay, so 2 is less than 3. Does that mean that 3 is less than 2? Nope, that's no good. This property doesn't work either. How about the transitive property? For any real numbers x, y, and z, if x is less than y, well, let's try 2 is less than 3, and y is less than z, you can say 3 is less than 4, how about? Then does that imply that 2 is less than 4? Well, again, this is not a proof. This is just a specific example, but we do know in this case that the way less than works, uh, it would follow the transitive property. So that one is okay. But still, since reflexive and symmetric didn't work, we can say that this is not an equivalence relation. Okay, let's try one more example. This example is going to be a little more complicated. Let's look at the set of integers and let m be equivalent to n if and only if m minus n is divisible by 3 for any integers m and n. So let's just take a look at this. What if we said um, 5 for m and we'll say 4 for n. Then 5 minus 4 is 1. So these are not equivalent to each other. 
Okay, well, what if I chose m equals 5 and n equals, how about, 2? Then I could say 5 minus 2 is 3, and 3 is divisible by 3, so 5 and 2 are equivalent to each other. Okay, so we want to prove that this is an equivalence relation. Let's check the three properties. First, we have reflexive. So for any integer m, I can say that m minus m is 0. And 0 is divisible by 3, so sure, m is equivalent to m. Reflexive works. How about symmetric? For any integers m and n, suppose that m is equivalent to n. And in order to show the reflexive, or sorry, symmetric property works, what I would need to show then is that n is equivalent to m. Okay, well, what does it mean that m is equivalent to n? That means that m minus n is divisible by 3. That's just the definition of this uh, relation up here. And if m minus n is divisible by 3, then n minus m, which is just the negative of m minus n, well, that's also divisible by 3. So in this case, n is equivalent to m. To see an example of this, look at m equals 5 and n equals 2. What about the other way around? What if I chose m equals 2 and n equals 5? Well, in this case, I would be getting 2 minus 5, which is negative 3, which is still divisible by 3. So that works. How about transitive? For any integers m, n, and p, suppose that m is equivalent to n and n is equivalent to p. And if I want to show the transitive property, my goal is to show that m is equivalent to p. Okay, so I can use the definition to rewrite these two expressions. m is equivalent to n and n is equivalent to p. So this means that m minus n must be divisible by 3. Another way to write that is that it, it equals 3 times some integer. That would mean that m minus n is divisible by 3. And n minus p is divisible by 3. Another way to write that is to write as 3 times b, where b is some integer. Then I can say that m minus p is just m minus n plus n minus p. And that's the same thing as 3a plus 3b. I can factor out the 3, and this is just 3 times some integer. a plus b is an integer. If a and b are integers, a plus b is definitely an integer. And if m minus p equals 3 times an integer, that means that m minus p must be divisible by 3. So this means that m is equivalent to p, and I've shown transitivity. So I can definitely say that this is an equivalence relation. So when you're going through to check whether or not something is an equivalence relation, you have to check the three properties, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive.